Okay, um, hi, this is uh, the first of a short series of videos about a, a new project I've got to um, control, computer control my uh, domed observatory. Um, I just thought I'd start here with uh, the outdoor telescope, but I, I do love working outdoors, not in a confined space of a dome. Um, so you know, there are places uh, where this is a fantastic. In fact, last night I was out here observing Mars uh, with this very setup. Um, but the thing is, uh, uh, coming across from there, the, uh, the Isle of Wight direction and the Solent, we are very close to the sea, uh, a lot of wind uh, comes along and uh, you know most of the time it's not possible to work outdoors without the telescope uh, shaking too much to do any kind of uh, imaging, especially high resolution imaging or uh, long exposure imaging. So uh, to that end, uh, what we want to do is, um, this is the dome, um, it's, it's a handmade dome, it's been up since about uh, 2006, um, the whole thing was built uh, by me and uh, my, my father, and um, it, it, it's where I do a lot of my uh, work and on photometry and long exposure astrophotography. And the thing about it at the moment is, as you can see, it's, a, it's purely manual and um, the, the telescope points through this slit, as you can see. And when I'm uh, busy doing, say, two hours of photometry or four hours of imaging an object going across the sky, I have to make sure, keep coming out here uh, every few minutes, maybe every 10 minutes, worst case, half an hour is pretty good. And I have to give the, uh, the dome a little a little push for a few degrees, uh, otherwise the telescope is going to be occulted by the dome. And what I want to do is automate this so that there's a motor and a computer controlling this uh, dome. And that's the project. Uh, and the goal is for it to be very low cost. And I want to build as many bits and pieces of it as I can. And I'm going to write the software for it entirely on my own. So it's going to be uh, keep the cost down. And I just thought a lot of astronomers might make, you know, might find this fascinating they might find it useful if they're about to uh, uh, try and do something similar to their to their observatory so here we are in the dome now um, just to uh, show you some of the challenges and some of the uh, details that we're going to have to deal with to make this thing work um, as you can see this is the the telescope inside covered in cobwebs um, and this is the telescope that would be uh, controlled by my laptop over there uh, for uh, imaging a target or doing some photometry on a star for for um, potentially many hours and, and as I've explained um, I would have to keep moving the slit um, so many degrees every 20 minutes or something to make sure that the telescope is still pointing out. And the idea is, that, as you can see, the dome is, is made of fiberglass and it's sitting on this uh, big steel uh, right angle ring running on these upside down wheels and it, it turns quite well, um, squeaks as you can hear. Uh, one of the problems is, uh, is that this material I've used for uh, keeping the uh, weather out actually rubs uh, a lot all, um, around the whole circumference of the dome on this shelf and that causes a bit of friction but that's going to be solved and that will probably be explained coming up in, in, in a future video. But um, the, the idea is that we're going to have to arrange for some kind of motor, I'll show you what I'm thinking of, uh, to drive this dome and uh, also some kind of detectors to detect the position. And you can see these pieces of masking tape that I've just put. I've actually already subdivided the uh, dome into 32 segments um, and I'm just trying to get a feel for putting some kind of sensor on here so that um, the computer, whatever it's going to be, the solution uh, will uh, know where it is. So, um, so that that's the thing. Now, let, let me show you uh, the motor. Okay, so this is uh, the, the the bits. These are the bits and pieces that I've already got so far, and I'm definitely going to use this motor. This is a 24 volt uh, windscreen wiper motor, and this wheel. Uh, is a basic wheel for radio spares. Uh, this this is also for radio spares. And my good friend, uh, Mark Parrish, who lives in Selsey um, from Button Design, 
I, I'm not a mechanical engineer, he is, uh, and um, he uh, kindly arranged this bracket to, to attach the wheel to the gearbox. This is actually a gearbox. And the idea is that somehow I'm going to have to arrange for a bracket to force this wheel either from here or from here um, and actually drive this ring. So I've got the, I've got the motor connected up to uh, a 24 volt power supply. So it just right. This is actually full speed because the gearbox is quite slow. And the idea of it is that this is this is just a quick demo. The idea is if I push this up, you can see that it actually drives the dome around. Okay. So the motor is actually up. <laughs> the motor is actually up to the task of driving this dome. And at the moment, the friction is. Uh, not bad on a hot day it's good but in the winter this tightens up and it becomes quite a stiff uh, structure so um, when we have made the dome spin a little bit easier uh, in all weather conditions uh, then I definitely know that this motor is up to the task so this is the end of the, the introduction this is that's the intro that's what I'm trying to achieve and in the next video I'll, I'll show you uh, uh, some of the attempts at making brackets to, to, to deal with this, to mount the motor. And also I'll start introducing some of the ideas I've got for the electronics and the software. So, uh, okay.